uh, let's let's start. It seems uh, uh, a lie, but we are here finally in the fourth day of the symposium, and the first speaker will be Shan Shan Li. Uh, it's an invited talk, and uh, we are very very proud to have uh, this talk uh, today. It's about the vigorous development of uh, data-driven astronomy, education, and public outreach. And uh, Shan Shan is from, from China. So is our is one of our Asian speakers. Uh, thank you very much, Dongni, to be here as a chair. We will try to solve the problems uh, during the conference. And thank you, Shan Shan, to, to share your time with us this, uh, at this symposium. So, Please start, the stage is yours, and we are ready to hear your invited talk. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, let me start. Uh, you can hear my screen, right? Uh, yes. You can see my screen, yeah, okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, hello everyone, good noon, uh, or make uh, good morning, good evening uh, to everyone. It's my pleasure to have this chance to talk about the vigorous uh, development of DEPO, uh, which is short for the uh, data driven astronomy and education and public outreach. Uh, first, I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shen Shen Li. Uh, and uh, I am in charge of the uh, education and the public outreach at uh, uh, China VO team. Um, and I'm currently working at the National Astronomical Observatory in China. And okay, okay. So let me start. Uh, astronomer uh, deal with astronomy data every day. Actually, uh, astronomy is a data-driven science. Uh, even in the early time of the astronomy study, pre-philosophers accumulate observed uh, data. Uh, with the development of the technology and uh, internet technology, astronomical data can be obtained, stored, and transferred much faster than before, and the data uh, amount to increase every year. Uh, currently, astronomers use uh, data from, let me see, yeah, okay. Uh, currently, astronomers use data from observation, uh, observation mission attack telescope like SDSS, like Gaia, like LAMOS. Uh, this is some of the typical uh, data amount of this project. It's about a uh, terabyte. So like in uh, as the uh, data release for 14, the data amount is about 160 terabyte. The Gaia mission just released their early data release three. The compressed CSV is about 1.3 terabyte. Uh, Lamos, uh, in Lamos uh, uh, data release six, uh, it released over 10 million spectrum. It's about one terabyte. So, but uh, uh, in the next generation soon, astronomy study will enter a new era of big data, not gigabyte, not terabyte, but a petabyte. Um, like uh, this, uh, pro this astronomy project uh, we all may be very familiar like as uh, like the uh, here the LSST uh, the fast so uh, like LSST uh, planning to acquire 25 terabytes every night the fast uh, it's the 500 meter aperture uh, spherical radio telescope in China uh, began to operation in science since this year, uh, will generate 20 uh, petabytes data every year. And uh, we all uh, know that SKA, it plays 
in the phase one science archive to have 300 pet vets. So this is a huge amount of data. Um, all these missions and uh, telescope data I mentioned here are used mainly by astronomers. Uh, as everyone know, they dig in this uh, data sites like explorers digging for treasures. Uh, only they want to discover undiscovered laws, stars, phenomena. But at the same time, we should be aware of that uh, these data are not just open to astronomers, but uh, they can be acquired and used by all the people, all the people who want to use them. So the scientists from other areas, the programmer uh, don't have as uh, astronomy background, uh, or the students in physics class, uh, public visiting science museums, or even primary school, uh, can use this data. So the problem is, is how they can use this data, how to let the public with no astronomy background getting in touch with the real science data. So here I want to mention one event in China. Uh, this year, over 10 million students take the national college entrance uh, examination in China. Many universities welcome the new uh, students with a welcome package, uh, including some uh, an admission letter and some gifts related to the university. Among them, the University of Chinese Academy of Science uh, include a CD in the welcome package. Uh, the, in this CD, uh, 15 pulsars captured by fast this telescope uh, was recorded in. Um, this topic was very popular on Weibo at that time, uh, which the Weibo is a Chinese micro blog platform uh, with more than 300 million users. The hashtag University of Chinese Academy of Science Admission Letter Brain Sound from Universe. Uh, this hashtag was viewed more than 110 million times in a short time. Okay, we can see that combined with social events, astronomical data presented in the form of sound attract the attention of the public. Uh, they don't need to have any astronomical background as long as they have the curiosity of the universe. They may click the link and uh, to listen to the sound to have a chance to know what fast is, what fast uh, observe, they, what this telescope can do. Uh, by contrast, by, oh, okay. by contrast, I want to show you that uh, since the September uh, 2016 first project uh, was complete, uh, it began to attract public attention. Nearly one million tourists visited FAST in one year. It is because it located in a very remote part in China. Uh, it this 1 million visitor is already over its capacity. So they don't have enough staff to get all these curious people. So you can see the data plus internet plus EPO um, have over a hundred million in a few days to, uh, to bring the attention. But uh, if we use the traditional lecture to let the people to get to there to listen to the lecture, we only have this amount of people. It's a, so in this case, uh, people feel astronomical data with ear, um, but maybe they don't realize it. They start some kind of astronomy. So the similar situation happened actually in many cases, uh, like the beautiful picture captured by Hubble telescope, like the Pluto uh, skirt took by New Horizon, and the first ever black hole picture. This all social event attract some, uh, so some public attentions and uh, to bring a lot of views on the internet. These are very all very successful uh, examples. 
and the, behind them are astronomical data. So thanks to the in development of the internet and social media, this astron astronomical data uh, can be spread very fast and impressed a lot of people. The topic about first ever black hole picture, picture was viewed 860 times on the platform Weibo in China. But we have to notice at the same time that in the, all these cases, the astronomical data was used in a very simple way. Uh, by simple, I mean the data was processed by professional uh, astronomers and uh, to produce sound images. Uh, people can get the information easily, but uh, do not need to understand and uh, don't have to do anything. Uh, they just uh, listen and uh, watch. This is good for the information to transmit and spread, but uh, people may, may have a, a little enlightenment here, but uh, they don't get very deeply, uh, they, they don't get much astronomy uh, knowledge. Um, astronomer educators want to make sure the background information and more accurate astronomy knowledge to transmit during this process. So uh, as Euro, we use the lecture, uh, we use the write articles, publish books uh, to spread all this information. So here in China, uh, uh, these are all some projects uh, to done uh, by China VO team. So we combine with the uh, astronomical data and uh, the traditional way to write articles, to write books, to uh, do some lectures, to do teacher trainings, to train uh, people, to lecture people, to let them know astronomical, uh, not more knowledge behind the astronomical data. And um, here you can see some more events. So uh, we, we uh, furthermore, we combine with the, combine the, uh, traditional lecture way and the modern internet uh, technology. Like uh, we have a, a WeChat official account. Uh, in 2019, it was viewed uh, uh, 60,000 times. And uh, we have a MOOC. Uh, we bring the lecture online and to have a MOOC. Over a thousand teachers uh, was taken this class online. Uh, usually we have 50 people every year to take this class. So you, you can see it's a huge uh, advance. And the lecture, uh, and the, also we put a lot of lectures online. So uh, here I give some example to, uh, to let people see the data plus internet plus the public outreach to make have may make people have more opportunity more information uh, and uh, to may to have more organized involved organization involved to have more forms of expressions and participation ways but uh, this is not enough still not enough uh, we want more uh, we want to have um, more interesting uh, activities, more attractive activities, more creative, more possibilities. So uh, to, to come to this topic, I have to see, uh, I have to introduce the VO, the idea of virtual observatory. So here, virtual observatory uh, is a data intensively online uh, astronomical research and uh, education uh, environment taking adv advantage of the advanced uh, information technologies to achieve seamless global access to astronomical information. Uh, here is the vision of VO. I, I want to rate them, but I want to see the VO standards and tools used widely in astronomy study and also can be powerful in the field of astronomy EPO. 
Here is the example. Um, it's called the World Bad Telescope, WWT. The application of the, um, it's an application of VO standard in depot area. So the uh, WWT was first launched in 2008 by Microsoft Research and now managed by the AAS. Its a platform can allow user to explore all sky service uh, across the electric magnetic spectrum to the uh, NASA uh, great observatories. So it can uh, it has also uh, many multiple interaction ways. So you can use it in the planetarium. You can uh, bird it bird uh, view it. Uh, you can use it on your laptop. Uh, here is some examples. People, students use a word bed telescope in the classroom or to use in the museum, a science museum. And uh, it can also use this, this part, the, uh, on this page, the uh, right part is the, um, uh, is a movie called Guo Shou Jin, Astronomical Achievement. It's a photo movie we incorporate with a university to create some uh, some a photo movie use the uh, World Wide Telescope's data. So you can see it can use the in many ways. And uh, to encourage people to use this platform to get in touch with the astronomical data, we organize the guided tour contest in China. Uh, the fourth contest just finished uh, this August. Uh, totally, the, uh, we have over 250 people participate in this contest, and uh, they uh, they uploaded uh, uh, 121 uh, tours. Uh, you can see the number increase every time when we organize this contest. And I have to mention the ESA Sky. Uh, the China VO team cooperate with the Ether Sky to launch a, a Chinese version of this platform. It's a astronomical data visualization platform with uh, VO vision. People can use it to the explore, explore mode to view astronomical data easily. Uh, for, I want to mention more uh, data to DOM. It's also a um, case of the v, uh, astronomical data use in the photon. Okay. Uh, uh, two okay. More okay. Uh, to 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 go furthermore, to go to make. Uh, the astronomical data can be used uh, more act uh, more fine. So we have to come to the citizen science project. The most successful citizen science project um, uh, is the Galaxy Zoo. Uh, I, everyone know. Okay, I want to skip this. The Galaxy Zoo. Uh, I have to mention this. Uh, more than a million people around the world has participated the citizen science pro project on this platform, the Zooniverse pro uh, platform. Over 180 papers have already published. Uh, if we design the project uh, uh, properly, we can involve very young people to in this kind of citizen science project, like. Uh, the China VO team launched a citizen science project in China as well. It's called Popular Supernova Project. So in uh, 2015, a 10-year-old uh, student discovered a supernova on this platform. And up to now, there are uh, a totally certain uh, 32 supernova or nova has been found on this platform by the users. Okay, I summarized some of the uh, why citizen science projects combined with the astronomical data is a good way of the uh, for astronomical EPU. Uh, 
no need to say with the help of the internet technology, astronomical data can support large scale of projects with huge amount of participants. And for public participations, they not only can learn astronomy in a vivid way, but also can access to the real data. For astronomer, they have responsibility to educate and to do the public outreach. At the same time, the, their resource may limit it. And uh, with the participations of many parties, the result of the project can lead to uh, astronomical discoveries and may help scientists analyze and summarize scientific laws and methods. So this, this is the uh, final thing I want to mention. So for the future, the citizen science, uh, if we want to go further to let the uh, public to involve more, we have to go to the interdisciplinary study and activities. Like these two projects uh, was held in China by a uh, it's our team cooperate with different organizations. The first one is to use the LAMOS spectrum to do the uh, data mining uh, contest. There are uh, uh, nearly a thousand people participated in this contest. And the second one is to use the popular supernova project I mentioned before, use the data to to do a AI technology uh, contest to let the P a student to uh, use the image from PSP uh, with a to come up with some AI algorithm to identify supernova. There are 483 teams uh, come from different university and the colleges in China participated in this project in this contest. So this may be one of the important future use of astronomical data and may help better process astronomical data. Okay, finally, the IAU Working Group Data-Driven Astronomy Education and the Public Outreach. Uh, here is the web page address. You can find more best uh, practices I, than I mentioned today. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shanshan. I think uh, Dongni Chen is uh, available now. Try Dongni. Well, meanwhile. Shanshan. Oh, hello. How are Hi. you? <laughs> nice to hear. And I don't know if you are in. Shen Shen. Uh, Hi. I can hear you. Yes, go go with the um, with the questions, please. Uh, well, I can. Shen Shen. Shen Shen, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I, I will uh, try to to help. Um, um, here in the chat, uh, there is a question is uh, from myself. Uh, I would like to to know if you can explain. Shen, Shen, shall we give five minutes to for the questions part? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, finally. <laughs> Uh, should 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 I read the questions myself or I I? Uh, Donny, please uh, transmit the questions to Shanshan. Yes, read the questions and Shanshan answer. Uh, can you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Because my mic is sounds okay, but I don't know whether you can hear me. Yes, yes can. I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 <laughs> because my mic sounds okay. Yes. But, uh, uh, <laughs> make the questions. Make the questions. Oh, just uh, uh, 
必须是，呃。Uh, how merits impact other activities? Then how to merit them? Well, uh, I can I can ask you about the measurement of impact of the activities in the in the um, mm -hmm. general audiences and also in the um, science citizens. So, uh, how do you measure the impact of the activities on the public? Uh, yeah, you can see in my cases, I I mirror them uh, only by the view. So, so if they view the activities, like uh, if, if they participate, like uh, they, they view the pictures, they hear the sound, they participate in the topic, uh, I consider them uh, be impacted by the activities. Okay. So if... If if you give a lecture to the school, the impact people may be uh, uh, about a hundred. Uh, a classroom people may be about fifty. But uh, if you put it online, uh, if Shen Shen even, can yeah. just read if, uh, questions. Yeah. Okay. Um. Well, I yeah. I will follow. I will follow here. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And I can do ask uh, about uh, how do we address the large differences to technology access? I am thinking about Mexico, in which uh, many regions have really limited access to the internet or technology. Can we adapt big data project to simpler versions? Uh, yeah, because I mentioned uh, many different uh, kind of uh, activities in my talk. Uh, some of them we did really uh, bring them to the remote part because there may be for many reasons their classroom don't have the internet. So we bring the astronomical data with us to to, to like let them to experience. Uh, yeah, the, the, yes, you still can do something like to uh, at least to, to show there the pictures, the uh, the the data, the sound, and uh, to, 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 to let them view maybe a movie. Uh, you, you still can do this. Yeah, but uh, if you want to catch up with the latest news, the topic, you have to have the internet access. You, uh, or if you want to participate in a citizen science program, you have to have the, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, one more one more question by Kentaro Yashi. Do you give mm -hmm. the public online seminars and lectures for their use in big data? Uh, yeah, we uh, face to the different uh, uh, different uh, type of people, like to the uh, uh, to teachers in high school. Uh, they don't have to understand the big data. They only have to know how to use the uh, the 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 maybe the worldwide telescope platform to to teach. But uh, if we communicate with the uh, computer science programmers, uh, uh, they 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 can they they already know a lot of things about the big data. They only don't know many astronomical laws. They 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 the knowledge. So we communicate in different ways. We have seminars, lectures in, yeah, make, face different groups, yeah. Here a, que a question by Carmen Pantoja. Do you, uh, sorry, do the MOOCs, uh, also, the MOOCs also include a, a component for the public outreach? Uh, yeah, the MOOC is, uh, mainly faced uh, to the teachers, but some of the uh, educators from the science museum participate in this class. After the class, they will design their public outreach uh, activities, use the knowledge they learned uh, from our MOOC. Um, a final question, because uh, we are out of time, but the final question from the chat, uh, the chat space is by Walter Guevara, is uh, between a comment and a question. The world astronomical information from here to about 50 years, as it will be stored and handled in one place, in several places here in the planet, 
or in a lunar uh, in the lunar base <laughs> on the moon i think well uh, what do you think about the uh, storage of uh, astronomical data uh yeah from here uh i have to write the question again to understand uh to about 50 years it will be stored where, where we will store such a amount of uh, data uh, I yeah i i i think i i mean for right now uh people to be uh keep on keep build a lot of database at different area uh, on this planet but uh, as the data amount accumulated maybe further we will build a data data base on lunar i who knows but um, maybe for at that time, we can store data in a very small disk. Yeah, the it, it uh, but uh, the technology keep impress, uh, keep give us price, and will surprise me. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. We have not more time for the questions. And Sir uh, Shang was a pleasure, a great uh, talk. Thank you very much to be here. Thank you. And